This is the line feed reading list for September 2009. In this edition we'll be getting through nine magazines and I'm sorry I've left this so late, they're not as fresh as they, they should be really, but hopefully just as interesting. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Unsedissimo, which is a 16 page magazine that stays, it's, has a regular format and number of pages but the content changes completely each issue depending on whose uh, the issue is about or who is sort of putting it together. In this case it's uh, French graphic designer Fenette Miller, uh, I hope I said that right, who I'm a massive fan of, uh, her work is lovely. Past uh, illustrators and designers have been like Frank Shimero. Uh it's, it's well worth picking up, every issue is a different person sort of taking over. Uh, moving swiftly on to Monica. Now the big key to Monica is that uh, it's an anonymous publication, so there's no credits, no names, no nothing. It's just uh, a bunch of sort of essays and photographs and stuff put together anonym anonymously. It's and the idea is that would free people up to sort of write about things or s sort of do things that they wouldn't normally do because they don't have to say who they are at the end of it. And you end up with some really cool little articles, like, like it's really well sort of selected what's going on. I, I just loved The Dark Art of Marketing, I, that was one of the titles that totally grabbed me. <laughs> um, and there are sort of people writing about other people, but they, they're not allowed to say who they are themselves. So really well produced, quirky little mag. Um, uh, I got mine too from the Design Museum in London, so if you have trouble finding one, you can always buy one online from there. Um, people that follow my blog and possibly my column in Graphic Magazine will have hopefully heard about Pyramid Power. Pyramid Power is a Canadian art-based magazine uh, and the, the thing I really love about it is that it's just really fun. It's, it's not stayed or bogged down in hideously overblown essays or anything like that. It's just really... Um, cool to flip through and they do all sorts of weird stuff like they'll uh, have, have a, a mistakes page every issue where they tell you what mistakes were made in the last issue in big sort of type um, and you, you just never know what each issue is going to bring it's, it's a real sort of nice surprise every time you see an issue um, and it changes like the design changes every issue as well there's a mistakes page which is very cool I'm a big fan of Pyramid Power, I, I thoroughly recommend it. Um, -hoo. Oh, and Little White Lies, this is another uh, Lion Feed favourite. In fact, you'll probably see, if you're looking at this on the Vimeo page, there'll be an actual video about Little White Lies on there, which I made for a friend in, in Melbourne who hadn't seen a copy before. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a magazine that just is so good every time. It's the, actually the only magazine I subscribe to. Um, they just they take a film if you if you haven't heard of it before I should explain they take a film and they use that film as a basis for a whole heap of features based loosely around that the topic of the film this issue was about a British film so they had they did a sort of special on up and coming British actors and directors and stuff which is which is unusual but but really good um, good to see them supporting British film as well because uh, it needs all the help it can get, especially with distribution. Um, it's just, it's uh, visually awesome, like it's got a sort of uncoated back section that's always like, you know, really well illustrated and it, there's not a lot to, to fault about Little White Lies. If you love film and you love magazines, it's absolutely perfect. Um, this is good actually, I haven't bought a lot of filler this month, or I haven't received a lot of filler. Uh, Sup Magazine is another favourite, I actually contacted them and asked them to send me a copy so I could feature it. Uh, it's one of the few music magazines that, um, to have this theory that the best music magazines are free these days, the ones on the newsstands are completely rubbish. This doesn't seem to be any that are inspiring or anything. And you can actually pick SUP up in various stores for free uh, if they distribute to your city. Unfortunately they don't in, a, in Australia. Um, 
but you can see a copy here. Um, <coughs> it's just, uh, what do I like about it? Um, I like the photography for a start. It's always like not what you would expect to see in a music magazine. It's sort of casual and unpolished, and I don't mind taking a photo of like, you know, some something sitting on a drawer, or a dresser, or something that was you know, as part of the shoot. It's just just gives you an extra dimension to the bands and stuff they're talking about um, and it's, um, it's just a, you know a really fresh approach to music magazines it doesn't feel salesy like I think a lot of the magazines on the newsstands these days are too caught up in the whole marketing of the music and they forget to actually connect with readers um, who just want to know about the music um, is that waffly? Probably is. You're probably just all tuned out. But should I crack on with graphic? Um, I've written about graphic before as well. Graphic is a fantastic graphic design magazine from Korea. Uh, if you can get hold of a copy, please do. You can order it through their website now. This issue focuses on exhibitions uh, and actually features an interview with the guy behind something called Kiosk. Oh, and I, I should see his name because um, it was implanted in my brain and it's dropped out. <laughs> um, oh yeah, Christian Christoph, uh, Christoph Keller is the man behind uh, Kiosk. And I want to, uh, you know, look him up if you can because he does all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, Kiosk is just one of the many really interesting projects this guy puts together and it was just um, a traveling ex ex exhibition of art based books um, that sort of changed depending on where the location was. Uh, I saw it at the ICA in London uh, and like a different artist would sort of set up the exhibition and do the you know the shelves the books sat on and all that sort of stuff really good and there's lots of, sort of similar exhibitions in this issue of graphic that you can read about too and it all they're all sandwiched between these great sort of illustrated <laughs> um, sort of quirky illustrations of each exhibition or like an idealized version of each exhibition um, it's just a uh, graphic the magazine is just it's it takes a subject and it writes about it really well it talks to the people you want to hear from and it's wrapped up in just this really lovely design that makes you want to cherish it um, and that's that's probably the, the most glowing review I can give of a magazine I think it's really good if you if you love graphic design then grab a copy of graphic I, I spent a lot of time on this bit because I wanted because you just flick through pages and there was loads of pictures of exhibitions of other magazines you sort of wanted to zoom in. Oh, it had um, or Becca do like this weird parasitic magazine that they insert into loads of different sorts of magazines and graphic, this issue of graphic has one of their little parasitic magazines in there which strangely the illustration was similar to what they were using in the actual magazine anyway um, but this look for the colored, the black border and the colored spine you'll find that popping up in all sorts of random sort of magazines there's been quite a few that they've inserted um, various bits of that into. Um, I'll try and explain that better at some point when I've got a bit more breath. Uh, Artichoke is, gosh, it's another favourite. This this is our Australian magazine for this edition, and it is probably my favourite Australian magazine at the moment. It's put together for the design... Uh, DIA, what's that? Design Institute of Australia, I think. And yet you do find in Australia that people tend to, when they talk about design, they don't tend to talk about graphic design. So this is mainly about interior design and, um, well actually it's mainly about architecture and interior design with some sort of industrial slash product design uh, and a smidgen, tiny smidgen of graphic design. Um, but that just reflects the way the industry sort of is over here. Uh, graphic design sort of on the bottom rung. But it is, but at the same time, it's a, it's one of the better designed magazines. It's designed by a group called Cube Construct here in, in Melbourne town. And each issue, they 
they take the theme and they wrap the design around it. This is the theme of isolation. But you'll find there's a little explanation in there as well as to why Cube Construct have, you know, done what they've done to this issue to tie it in with the theme of, you know, isolation and buildings for one. I think that that's sort of part of the explanation there. Design and loneliness. <laughs> Which is, it's, you know, a theme, it's, they're just really interesting themes, you know, you just wouldn't expect a design magazine to, you know, be saying, this is, you know, a magazine about solitude. I mean, they've had themes of like sport and, um, you know, uh, you know, eating out and all that sort of stuff. So I think it's just a really well considered magazine and really stylish in a, I hate using the word market, in a market <laughs> where uh, the, there's not a lot to sort of compete with. It just sort of shines, shines through the shit. Uh, it's one of the magazines too I wish that you, you know, people overseas could see and they would realise that yes, Australians do care about design. I mean you can't tell looking at their other design magazines, but this one you can. And, and that's me evangelising a bit there. I'll stop now, because uh, now we have pop. I've actually got the magazines on my lap while I'm doing this, so if you hear me shuffling around that's why. Um, I'm really excited by this issue of pop because it's so much better than love. I don't know, that's, is that controversial? I don't know. But I I liked Pop before, and then Katie Grand, if you don't know the story, she was the woman behind the magazine. Uh, she left to go to Condé Nast to start Pop, to start Love magazine. Uh, and then Pop was put aside for a while until the new owners, Bayer, could put a team together to bring out the magazine. So there's been sort of a hiatus of um, a couple of issues. And what I think what is good about this is that whereas Love is focused on celebrity and the, the main criticism I had of Love was that it was celebrities that we'd seen about a gabillion times before anyway. Uh, whereas this new version of Pop is more art based. So they've sort of just, they've made a really clever decision to go complete the complete opposite way and not focus on celebs and be interesting and you know, find things that people might not have seen or might not have thought about. For instance, it, Margaret Thatcher as a fashion icon, you know? <laughs> it is, as ludicrous as that sounds, it's a lot more interesting than a picture of someone dressed as Amy Winehouse because Amy Winehouse wasn't available for the photograph, you know, which is what happened in Love in the first issue. And you just sort of thought, oh, why, you know, could you not? It, you know, if you're going to have a fake celebrity, you know, could you choose someone that hasn't been written about in every trashy mag ever? Um, but that's enough of me whinging about love, because, you know, Pop is, is completely different. It's a complete new beast. And, you know, it's just really interesting, like, getting models dressed up as bag ladies and stuff. I mean, it's not hugely PC, but it's... They just decided that they would be interesting. and. There's not enough magazines that do that. I, I love too, there's all these sort of inserts and pull-outs and posters and that, that feels a bit special too. It feels like they're giving you a little presence. Like this is like the pop zine that's in there, which is actually a poster, pull-out poster thing. And they seem to be done by different sort of creative groups. So again, so it's sort of involving different people in the design and editorial aspect of the magazine too, which is really interesting. Uh, it feels more like a sort of crazy collaborative effort because of it. Um, yeah, and the design of it, they, yeah, it's it's um, a, des a, a editorial design team I haven't heard of before. Um, <clears throat> so they've rather than going for like hiring a big name design agency or whatever, or like some big name art director they've actually decided again to be more interesting and find people that possibly you haven't heard of or seen their work before. Uh, this is an example of one of the quirky articles that's about the free freeway that runs through West London and uh, someone just wrote an essay about it <laughs> and some photos of not even selling clothes which again like there's enough pages in there selling clothes why do you need every feature to do that as well it's just 
I think they've, they've done a good job. I'd look forward to more issues of pop. And I'm, I haven't bought Love. I don't think I'll bother. Um, we're going to finish with Paris Vogue because I went and saw the September issue and it, it, it explained to me why American Vogue is so crap. And it is crap. It's ugly. It's brash. I think Grace Coddington actually does a good job, but I don't think Anna Wintour is... I, th I think she's a good editor. I don't think she's a good fashion magazine editor. I think that's the problem. Whereas here you get, and I'm going to say this wrong, Carne Reutfeld, who used to be a stylist and is now editor of French Vogue. And she d it is the quintessential Vogue. I'm sorry, American Vogue just does not touch this. And this issue is great because they just went through and they tried to create as many different looks as possible. There isn't even an editorial sort of story apart from the fact that they've tried to make every picture as different as possible. This is the editor's thing, is like their notes on how they were going to go about doing that. So it's just like each picture is different, it's great. And then at the back they had this thing where they just tried to put as much of the accessories on, the on this one model as possible. It's just, it's, it's inventive and there's a real love of fashion in there that I don't think you feel when you look at American Vogue. Um, and that's why I wanted to include that. And that, that's the end. I've finished. Ah, I hope that wasn't too rushed or anything. Um, the next one will be long very soon, I'm sure. Thanks. See ya.